morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the fourth public hearing of the newly created Committee for, for vehicle, vehicle for Hire, for Hire Vehicle. I am Councilman Reverend Ruben Diaz Sr., appointed to chair this committee by the Speaker of the City Council, the Honorable Carly Johnson. Today, we will be discussing three pieces of legislation. Number one, introduction 897 by Council Member Adams and Richards. This is a local legislation to amend the administrative code of the City of New York in relation to com commuter vans. Number two, the second, the second bill, introduction 925 by Council Member Williams and Miller and Chin. This is a local law to amend the administrative code of the City of New York in relation to the for hire and commuter vans with seating capacity greater than 20 passengers. Number three, introduction 958 by Council Member Cabrera and myself, Diaz. This is a local law to amend the administrative code of the City of New York in relation to re reducing specific penalties for taxis and for hire drivers. 958 Cabrera and Diaz, our piece of legislation is intended to repeal two prior laws enacted in 2011 and 2016 which dramatically increase the tax and limousine commission fines on the for hire vehicle and driver for various offenses. This, uh, this uh, piece of legislation is trying to uh, take back to, to, to 2011 uh, the level of fine that was increased to up to $10,000. We believe that when those laws were imposed, they increased the penalty for taxis and drivers, resulting in negative outcomes for the public and the drivers. The TLC resulted to extreme tactics in order to impose huge fines greatly affecting and hurting the drivers economically and overall well-being. The fines are imposed without consideration of the driver's records or the malicious action taken by the TSC inspector. For example, the TSC inspector used entrap entrapping, uh, entrapping delivery drivers by jumping into for hire vehicles and asking the driver to be taken to hospital and other places. Number two, entrapping the driver by impersonating passengers with disability, trying to get the sympathy of the drivers so the driver could take them to different places and they just do that just, just to, to, to impose a summon to the driver. Among many other duplicious acts in violation of the driver's Eighth Amendment right to be free of expensive fines, in the current climate, climate, many drivers are making less than minimum wage due to the obligation of having to pay for leases, pay for the base, basis fee, pay for gas, pay for insurance, pay for TLC fees, and many, many more other fees and expenses. We believe that fines up to $10,000 is in direct violation of the Eighth Amendment, right, which stipulate that the penalties should be equal to the crime. In other words, 
The Eighth, the Eighth Amendment of the United States Constitution says that penalty should be equal to the crime. The penalty cannot be bigger than the crime. And we believe that those fines uh, are violating the Eighth Amendment right, where penalties are above the crime. $10,000 is too high for a crime for the infraction committed. So we are very sure, very positive that this is a violation of the Eighth Amendment right. In other words, the penalty should not be higher than the crime or violation that have been committed, as I said. Today, I have been joined by some of my colleagues. Uh, one of them, just, just one, but the rest, the rest are coming. Uh, Council Member Borelli. And I work, on, I work on the representatives of the mayor's office who are here today to provide their opinion regarding this bill and the commission of the Taxi and Limousine uh, Commission. This meeting, I always start in time. So people are, are here, I used to start late. I'm trying to start my meeting on time. So let's see who's coming. But now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to ask the Central Staff Council to administer the oath to the commission on the staff. Please raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this committee? and to respond on honestly to council member questions. I do. I do. I do. Thank you. Good morning, Chair Diaz. I'm Mira Zoshi, Commissioner and Chair of New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission. Two of the bills, intro 897 and 925, concern commuter vans. Commuter vans are just one of the industries regulated by the TLC, but they're a vital part of the city's transportation system. Commuter vans provide affordable transportation to New Yorkers, mostly in the outer boroughs, but also in Manhattan. This is especially true in neighborhoods that have less access to public transit. As noted in a recent New York Times article, the biggest challenge facing the commuter van industry today is the presence of unlicensed vans. In many neighborhoods, there is an increase in the number of larger vehicles with over 20 seats holding themselves out as commuter vans. Illegal vans are dangerous because unlike authorized commuter vans, they lack basic safety protections, such as vehicle inspections and appropriate insurance coverage. Because there's no guarantee that the vehicle is insured, passengers and drivers have no remedy for medical expenses or other injuries in the event of a crash. More often than not, the driver of an unlicensed vehicle is also unlicensed by the TLC, meaning that they have not undergone a background check, drug test, or required trainings. The TLC has worked with the industry and members of council to support the licensed industry, including through van decals and passenger outreach. But the most effective tool is enforcement. As part of our enforcement against illegal vans, we regularly partner with NYPD and have recently begun partnering with the city's sheriff's office as well. This is difficult, resource-intensive work. So far in this year, as of June 15th, we've conducted 336 operations targeting illegal vans, including 148 in Brooklyn and 185 in Queens. In addition, we've conducted 123 joint operations with NYPD, including 39 in Brooklyn and 34 in Queens. These operations support our other key enforcement tools, seizing illegal operating vehicles, including vans. We stopped seizing vehicles of first-time offenders in 2015 because of a federal court ruling. Now, before TLC seizes and forfeits a vehicle, there must be at least one prior conviction for unlicensed illegal operation of the vehicle. Once we operationalized this approach, enforcement began forfeiture of, for all illegally operating vehicles in late 2016. Since then, we've successfully seized repeat offenders, 103 vehicles, of which 36 were commuter vans. In this calendar year alone, again, these are repeat offenders, 51 vehicles have been seized and nine of them were vans. <clears throat> and 13 vans have been forfeited. These operations yield hundreds of summonses against illegal van operators, but also against for hire vehicles doing illegal pickups. 
which add to congestion and dangerousness in major corridors like Flatbush Avenue, Manhattan, Chinatown, and Flushing, or in the area around Jamaica Station. Removing these vehicles from their owners and keeping them off the road permanently is our best enforcement tool. Intro 897 would amend the administrative code re by requiring that no application for authorization to operate a commuter van could be approved or renewed unless the application applicant produces records demonstrating that applicant has at least the same number of licensed drivers as affiliated commuter vans. We agree that unlicensed activity is a problem in the commuter van industry and that unlicensed drivers should never operate any TLC licensed vehicle, including commuter vans. This is why we take enforcement actions against unlicensed operators. I'd like to note, however, that many legitimate van businesses have justifiable business reasons for having a different number of drivers and vehicles. And while the TLC supports the goal of limiting unlicensed activity, we'd like to work with council to ensure that any such bill would not limit TLC's authority to authorize legitimate van businesses. The number of licensed vans exceeded 500 in, by August 2015, but it steadily declined, and now it's around 280. 243 licensed drivers and 53 authorized services. Licensed van operators are owned and operated as small businesses covering the costs of van maintenance, insurance, and licensing. Requiring showing a one-to-one -one match before authorization may pose an obstacle for these businesses because they do not always have <clears throat> at all times an exact match of vans to drivers. So not having a one-to-one -one ratio is not necessarily evidence that unlicensed operators are driving the licensed vans. There are many legitimate reasons for why a van applicant would have fewer dri licensed drivers than vans. For example, a company may purchase several vans because there's a good price opportunity before recruiting drivers, or the number of drivers may decrease because of sickness. These are normal occurrences in small businesses. No other sector regulated by TLC faces a similar requirement, and TLC is concerned that this bill may penalize legal businesses that are made up in almost entirely of community-owned and operated small businesses, and discouraging legal authorities may decrease the amount of licensed activity, which would further decrease the amount of licensed vans and drivers. Again, we share the concern about unlicensed commuter van activity. We've worked closely with Council Member Miller and other members on commuter van issues, and we look forward to furthering our conversations with Council as we address unlicensed activity. Intro 925 would give the TLC power to enforce against commuter vans that seat over 20 people. Today, TLC licenses and has the power to enforce against licensed and unlicensed commuter vans with a seating capacity of up to 20 seats. We know from experience, observation, and stakeholder input that there are more large vehicles in New York City that hold themselves out as commuter vans, whether they are vans or buses, which are beyond TLC's power to enforce. Not only are these larger vehicles unlicensed, they are also uninspected and extremely unlikely to have the right insurance to protect passengers. Additionally, these larger vans are dangerous to the communities in which they operate, not only because the safety concerns presented by all unlicensed activity, but because of their size, they have less ability to stop or maneuver crowded streets, including residential streets not meant for large buses or vans posing greater physical dangers to more passengers and to the public. The TLC supports Intro 925 because it would give the TLC new authority to enforce the full range of penalties against larger illegal vans, including fines, seizure, and forfeiture. We thank Council Member Williams, Miller, and Chin, and the commuter van industry for bringing this bill forward. Turning to Intro 958, which amends Section 19507 of the Administrative Code to reduce mandatory penalties for violations of law prohibiting taxicab drivers from asking a passenger for their destination before the passenger is seated in the vehicle, refusing to take a passenger to a destination, and overcharging a passenger. Intro 958 would also reduce mandatory penalties for four hire vehicles that do illegal street hails and eliminate the greater penalties set for illegal street hails in the hail exclusionary zone that was established by the hail law. That is, the airports and Manhattan south of West 110th Street and East 96th Street. TLC cannot support Intro 958. 
such reductions in penalties would weaken critical public safety and consumer protections. We know from painful experience that destination refusals are more often than not a proxy for discriminating against passengers based on race and ethnicity. Unfortunately, and even at the current penalty levels, we still get these complaints. TLC continues to receive complaints about re refusal for unacceptable reasons in the for hire and taxi sectors. There have been over 3,000 such complaints since January 2017, and these and laws and penalties remain a vital tool to ensure that all New Yorkers receive service. Intro 958 would greatly reduce this deterrent against discrimination, and it would move us backwards as a city instead of towards our goal for equitable service. Penalties for fare overcharges likewise cannot be reduced. It's important to call a fare overcharge exactly what it is, theft. By reducing these penalties, the bill sends a message to hundreds of thousands of daily passengers that their consumer rights and protections are not important at all. The bill would also reduce penalties for illegal street hails. In 2016, the council amended 19507 to enhance penalties for illegal street hails in those areas um, called the hail exclusionary zone, traditionally the areas of the yellow taxi market. In 2016, with the 2016 amendment was intended to protect yellow taxi drivers and owners from having their trips poached by illegal operators. The penalties for illegal street hails anywhere in the city generally range from a maximum of 500 for the first violation to license revocation for the third. Under the 2016 law, however, if a license for hire vehicle accepts a street hail in Manhattan or the airports, the local law penalties range from 2,000 to 10,000. These penalties were enacted at a time of increased Ill illegal activity in the hail exclusionary zone, and that illegal activity has not dissipated, and they serve as a deterrent. Reducing penalties for this behavior would undermine a key protection for taxi owners and drivers, as well as key Vision Zero protections. We have said many times that illegal street hails are inherently unsafe, and the council has recognized this threat since 1989 when it authorized the TLC to penalize drivers for illegal street hails and found that vehicles operating for hire without a TLC license are a threat to health, safety, and well-being of their passengers and the general public. The council increased penalties for legal street hails in 2012, noting in particular the danger posed to passengers by drivers with no insurance or insufficient insurance and that passengers who are hurt in unlicensed vehicles have no recourse to insurance or the TLC. We have recent examples of these dangers. We continue to see fatal crashes involving unlicensed drivers or vehicles. Last spring, a driver who illegally picked up a passenger crashed on East Gun Hill Road, killing the passenger. And earlier this month, an unlicensed driver using a licensed vehicle in the Bronx with 10 open DMV suspensions hit and critically injured a pedestrian at 149th Street and River Avenue. Illegal street hills are also bad for our licensees. Practically speaking, an illegal street hail by either licensed or unlicensed operators harm those drivers and bases that follow TLC rules, as well as state and local law. For those licensees, illegal street hails result in fewer passengers, and fewer passengers means less income. Um, and I'll note this is an acutely um, evident at the airports where both legitimate FHV operators and yellow taxi operators are fighting on a daily basis with illegal operators um, as if there's not enough competition already. We're sensitive to the fines and the driver struggles to make a living, and we've continued to find ways to ease burden on drivers. But I would also note that despite claims that drivers receive $10,000 penalties under Section 19507, that number is reserved for repeat offenders and has at least three violations in a 24-month pe period, and the total number of drivers that have ever received this penalty is one. In short, Intro 958 would significantly weaken critical safeguards for passengers against discrimination, theft, and illegal operation operators against unsafe operations. TLC does not support this legislation.
Thank you, Commissioner, for your participation and your opinion on the three pieces of legislation that we are uh, discussing today. Do you know? Do you know about the Eighth Amendment? I'll answer questions that are legitimate questions about the subject matter of this hearing, but I've been to your hearings enough times to know that many of your questions are set up and they're really intended to get a rise out of the audience and you. And I don't think that is a, a service to the general public. I don't think that's a service to so the industry. Think, and I don't think that's a service okay. to my agency. So if you, you have think, a legitimate no, you, you, question. Commission, commission, I'm sorry. This is not, this is, this is, do you think that the Eighth Amendment of the Constitution has nothing to do with the, with the, with the, with the extreme fine that you're putting in? You said, You've you said, written a letter to our office. To We've provided you with a detailed answer on that subject. So I think you I'm have our answer. You if you are aware of the I Eighth think Amendment. you have the answer. I don't have the letter in front of me. I'm happy to provide it to you after this All hearing. Right. That's what you have to say. The I'm letter you already have a copy you of. You are not aware. I don't know what you are aware of. But OK, let me, let me, you know, we all I'm going to reiterate. I am not going to be treated poorly by you again. I've had enough of it. I come here every are, time. and you. Put we that are, same attitude we, on. I am it's just not okay. To, it's not acceptable. I'm, okay. I'm a legitimate public servant. Okay. Treat me decently or you don't ask questions. I am treating you decently. I'm asking you questions. I'm, I'm treating you decently. I'm asking you questions. You are the one getting all, all upset. I'm telling you, I'm asking you questions. And your duty, your responsibility, is to answer the question to the count, to the to the committee, not to get so upset. And your duty and responsibility is to treat people and the public I am treating with you, respect. I am treating you with respect. Treat them decently, even if you disagree with you're what they're saying. To, you're trying to deviate the whole thing. You will not do it. I will not allow it. I'm asking you a question. We do any public hearing. And I'm asking you a question about, you know, about the Eighth Amendment. You just get up beside it. Why? I'll answer a legitimate question. Okay, now, the mayor of the city of New York and the community leaders uh, are fighting the laws of the state of New York based on the Eighth Amendment and even in marijuana cases, they are saying that the, the penalty that some people are getting for, for marijuana has been too high because the, 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 the penalties are not equal to the fine. So based on that, people are doing it in marijuana, people are doing it all over. Based on that, I'm saying $10,000 fine when the last year the, 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 count, the council, the chair of the committee and the council and the TLC imposed those fines to drivers. I think that's one about, I think driver. That's about lady, In my testimony, I said one driver received that. That driver was caught doing an illegal street hail in Midtown well, Manhattan did. in January twice, in February once, as a result of three consecutive summonses in less than two months, he did receive a $10,000 fine. That is the kind of enforcement the industry needs at a time of great competition. There are many licensed drivers out there, and many of them work every day in Manhattan to have to compete with illegal operators in the areas where their bread and butter income is, at the airports and in Manhattan, and have city council undermine their licensure by supporting reducing those penalties is not helpful for this industry, especially at this time. We have the state of New York, the Department of Motor Vehicles, and different institutions imposing fines. None of them has such a high fine penalties, such a high penalties for a traffic violation. So we're saying, simple as that, that when the council or the whatever you decided to, and the, the, and the, the city of New York decided to impose fines up to $1,000, $2,000. When the New York State Department of Vehicles doesn't do that, 
and you impose those kind of penalty up to ten thousand dollars. The losses, ten thousand up to ten thousand dollars. Doesn't matter how many, how many driver already have has only one. Maybe even even in in no driver have been has been uh, imposed a ten thousand dollar penalty. The losses up to ten thousand. So we are trying to amend that. That's 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 an aberration to the law, to the city of New York, to the drivers. So we're saying we should, we, should, we, should, we should do away with that piece of legislation. Whoever designed it, whoever said, we should uh, uh, impose a penalty of 10, up to $10,000, $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, $10,000 dollars to a driver for violating a traffic law. It's not a traffic law. It's, well, a, it's a criminal it was, and a civil it law, was, illegal the street crime, hail. The Picking crime. up illegally under the ad code is a criminal offense as I mean, well as a civil finish. offense. Okay. So the, 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 the penalty is, is too high for the crime, for the, for the violation, whatever you want to call it. So we're saying, we simple as saying, no good. If, if we're trying now to decrease the penalty for, for marijuana and for all the crimes, jumping the turnstile, uh, urinating in the street, all those we're saying the crime is too high, we got to decrease the crimes. So I'm saying, okay. There are real we, victims. Why don't we there the are crime? real <laughs> victims in cases of illegal operation. There's low insurance, there's a driver who's not vetted at all. There are passengers involved. I, I continue to resist this comparison to marijuana and jumping the turnstiles. Moreover, it, this is a climate of incredible competition. We bring in 3,000 drivers, 2,000 new vehicles. We cannot stop that influx because the TLC does not have the authority to stop that. The yellow taxis are fighting to keep trip volumes. The legitimate FHV drivers are fighting to keep trips. And on top of that, to reduce the penalties against those that compete against them illegally without any of the safeguards for the public, it seems a very difficult time to propose such legislation. Uh, we, we came here and we, we, we are presenting a bill to do to 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 re ready the Uber and to help the yellow taxi and to be sure that we uh, balance. How does this bill help can I, legitimate can I, can Uber you, drivers can I, can you and please, legitimate me, Uber? Can you please let me finish? Because you cannot Continue. control this. I'm the chairman of the committee. You talk when I tell you to talk. Please, let's be honest. You, can, you gotta listen. I'll you talk when you, I want to talk. Commissioner, Commissioner, I don't know who they're respecting whom. I'm talking, so I don't know who the, who's disrespecting whom. Uh, so we're trying to submit a bill. We came here. We presented. In, at the beginning, we were putting two thousand uh, dollars to Uber drivers and to drivers and. And you came here, you sitting in there, you said, no, we cannot do that because drivers are suffering. We had to help drivers. We had, that's too much for drivers. Based on your testimony and others, we decreased that to $400. And, 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 and basically because you, you were so concerned for drivers. Now we come in here again and I say, well, she's concerned for drivers, let, let's, 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 Whoever did this law, let me bring it down. So now you're saying that drivers should, should keep behaving with these with this, uh, uh, high penalties. That's what you're saying. Are, are, you, you, cons are you concerned with any of the licensed drivers, their, wel their course, welfare, and be, their ability to continue to get enough trips to make a living? Because allowing people to operate illegally erodes that. And this beyond that, this bill includes incredibly destructive provisions taking down penalties for things like racial discrimination and theft. The state of New York has laws. The Department of v v Motor Vehicle, the state of New York, the court system has laws to punish unlicensed drivers. 
to punish anyone that commit crime. There are laws there. I'm saying, if there is an unlicensed driving driver, there are laws to punish those drivers. So why is it that TLC has to post up to ten thousand dollars and and no more, more, more? Ain't ain't that, ain't that double jeopardy? Those laws in the ad code offer civil or criminal. It's in the alternative. You pursue one civilly through us, or alternatively, you can pursue criminally. You cannot pursue both. It's not double jeopardy. Oh, the state only has a very efficient and very strong measure against unlicensed drivers and those that commit crimes. Oh, the state only has, has, has those heavy penalty for the unlicensed drivers. But again, again, let's go back to my original question. The Eighth Amendment of the, the Constitution of the United States of America stated that people should be free, free of high fine, free of high uh, penalties, and that the penalty should be equal to the crime. I'm just saying, is that if the Constitution say that, why are we violating the Constitution of the United States? That's what I'm saying. So we're trying to fix that problem that was created in 2011 and 2016 when, when somebody decided to impose fines of up to $10,000 to, to, to drive for, 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 for a traffic violation. And we're saying, and you say, no, I, we, I'm not supporting that. So, okay. I told you I'm not supporting it because it undermines critical right. consumer protections. People should not be discriminated against, and we should not take that lightly. We should not reduce penalties associated with that. Passengers should not be subject to overcharges, we should ta not take that lightly, we should not reduce the penalties. And people who, who without a license, without vetting, many of them have suspended DMV licenses that operate illegally and take money out of the pockets of our licensed drivers and operators should be penalized and we should not reduce those penalties either. You also opposing 897. Could you tell me again why are you opposing that? I said I have concern, the same concern that Council Member Danique Miller has about operating um, licensed commuter vans with unlicensed drivers. I'd like to work with the Council on a bill that addresses that problem other than the one proposed in this bill because these are small businesses, some of whom I'm sure you'll hear testify today, and it's very difficult to keep a one-to-one -one ratio exactly for cars to to drivers. We don't impose that kind of a ratio in any other sector um, of our in regulated industries. We give uh, complete freedom to the, n the number of cars versus the number of drivers. So I'd like to explore with Council Member Miller a way to address this problem, which he and I agree upon, that doesn't also hurt the ability of small businesses to operate. Uh. Do you have that data, of how many commuter van, van services operators are there in the city of New York, you know that? That are authorized to operate? Uh, yeah, how many commuter, commuter, com, commuter van service? We have 53 authorized commuter van services. But do you have that, that data desegregated by boroughs? By boroughs? Uh, we can provide that to you, but they're primarily in Queens and Brooklyn. So how many drivers are employed in this sector, you don't know? Our employees? Yeah. I'm not sure if any of them are employees. The common, um, the common model is independent contractors. Okay, I have joined by council member, uh, what's he left? Council member Rodriguez. And I'm gonna make a, a whole of my questioning. I don't know if they want to have any question. Rodriguez. First of all, I'm proud of the work that we were able to do in the last couple of years, addressing a crisis that did not happen overnight. Uh, when 
the yellow taxi industry and the liver and the black and other, the traditional one, that was told, we will break you. Like, it really has some meaning in our city. Because no doubt that there has been a plan to destroy the traditional taxi industry. And it is not an easy thing to address. It's like the MTA. Uh, when you look to these particular taxi industries, like you compare how crisis had not happened overnight. And when you see members of this industry, delivery, who were the one providing the services in the out of borough area for decades, or the yellow taxi industry that they were promised, that if you buy a medallion, you will have the right, the exclusive right to be the only one that can do pick up and drop out in any corner of the five borough. And then suddenly you see another industry coming to the city, not following the same rule and regulation. They bind those individuals, those of you especially providing the service in Queens, the one that has won. You know, it is more difficult now for you to compete with whoever trying now to get into your market, trying to bring hundreds of new vans. We agreement with four and other, and not be able to, to compete at the same level. That's what we are, as adults, we are addressing today. It's about how can we level the playing field to be, to create a condition for everyone to do well in our great city of New York. So when we address the situation of the Midtown area and the JFK and LaGuardia, and at that time, we were talking about the importance to protect those who were providing those services there for decades. As new player came and trying to do illegal pickup in those areas. I believe that we did the right thing because, as I say, when we look to the out of our area, we, do the, we did the best we could to protect our liberal taxi drivers. We create a universal license. We increase the numbers of points that drivers can be able, instead of being able to get a two point, we increase it to four after the liberal taxi or any driver were taking a class and, and reduce those points that they were able to accumulate. So we, did, we tried to do the best we could to the taxi drivers. We were not playing games like here, meeting with this group and then cutting deal with the other one. We were very clear that our responsibility was to level the playing field of everyone. Proteger a los taxistas libres, proteger a la industria black, ayudar a los amarillos fue lo que nosotros hicimos dentro de lo que podíamos hacer mejor. Y por eso cuando hablamos de aumentar la multa y la discusión vino al despacho mío y se hablaba de aumentarla en todas las áreas de la ciudad de Nueva York. Nosotros dijimos que no se aumentara en la parte de los Arboro, que no se aumentara fuera de la 96. Commissioner, and my question is, as when we look at the 958, that we eliminate the penalty for illegal street hail, what could be the impact that that law will have, especially for the yellow taxi drivers and the order that they have license and they have the permit to pick up in those areas? First, I want to preface by the, the, the percentage of trips in which something that falls under the, what the, the violations that 958 addresses, refusals, overcharges, and illegal street hails, that's a very small percentage of all trips. So we're, the vast majority of drivers follow each and every rule and provide excellent professional service. But there are those drivers that do break them, but for passengers, that is a big deal. So each and every one time that there's a refusal, an overcharge, or a dangerous illegal street hail, that is a very serious event for a passenger. And so though it is a small, small percentage of our overall trip volume, like 0.4, 0.5%, it is a tremendous, um, it is a significant event in the life of a passenger um, and for our other licensed drivers. So the illegal street hail penalty reduction would have a significant impact on yellow taxi drivers that work in the central business district and at the airports, as well as licensed FHV drivers 
um, who operate at the airports because there is a tremendous amount of illegal activity that provides additional in competition for income each and every day. Um, and so at a time when we bring in so many drivers and so many vehicles every month, the agency has no control over that growth. We don't have the authority to limit the growth. Um, I think it would be salt on the wounds of the industry to further allow illegal competition to become just the price of doing business by reducing the penalties. So deliberate and of course like we, and I tried to do my best in my previous role overseeing the taxi industry, helping deliver as much as I could as the yellow and the black car drivers. But when we address penalty, and we had this, uh, that discussion, the increase of penalty for illegal street hail will happen citywide or only in the Midtown area, JFK and LaGuardia. So it's fair to say that as you yes, say right now that, repeating what you said right now, that most of the delivery who get fined for illegal street hail happen, get those fine out of this area, right? Out of the Midtown and JFK. I do know that most of the summonses we issue for the under 19507 for the illegal street hails in Midtown at the airports are to black car. They are cars that carry TLC licenses affiliated with the black car base. Um, the driver may be licensed or unlicensed, but they're conducting illegal street hails picking up off the street. Okay. Are those vehicles affiliated more with the app company like the Uber and Lyft? Um, I don't know today. I know about a, two, was it two years ago, we you know, when we were still seizing vehicles, we were seizing about 900 vehicles a month in Man Manhattan that were affiliated with Uber bases that were picking up illegal street hails. We don't seize on the first offense anymore. We seize on this, we seize towards forfeiture on the second. So I don't have that number um, readily available, but I'm happy to go back and get you a, an account over the last few months. Okay. I, I just want to end, you know, yes, in Biden, Councilman Bedias to continue working, and I will be working with him addressing how we protect the library who get most of the ticket, most of those fines out of the Midtown and the JFK areas. At the same time that we have to be very careful on now any move of any change that we're making, any previous law that we pass at the council, especially in the 958, will not have a negative impact that will put the situation even worse to those taxi drivers that they have licensed to be the one that do the legal pick up and drop out in the Midtown, JFK, and LaGuardia. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Council Member Rodriguez. One of the things that you could uh, help me out and work together is to join me in, su in supporting and, and signing in the bill to protect the, the yellow, that, that is a mess. And we're trying to uh, balance the injustice done to the industry. And I just came here six months ago, so he, he, one of the ways that you could help is joining the bill and supporting the bill so we could uh, regulate Uber. And, and, and I think they do it. So, so uh, Chairman. I, have been joined, I have been joined by Council Member Williams. Council Member Ballon, Council Member Moya. Uh, I don't know if any one of them has any comment or anything to say. No, thank you. So, uh, Chairman, if you don't mind, I, I got to say that there's a package of bill that, you know, Chairman Diaz, he has bills there by all the colleagues in mind. We also have bills. And I hope that as we try to pass a package of bill, that unfortunately we were not able to move in the past, addressing how to level the playing field, that this time around, again, and the speaker is very committed to address the situation and how to bring some solution 
to the whole crisis that is affecting our industry. I know that with the leadership of Speaker Johnson and you as a chairman of this committee, we will be able to have conversation on those bills, which are many, your and many other colleagues well, that also have. Yeah, those. thank you, Council Member. The only thing that I know and I have to say is that due to the laws and due to the regulation and due to, to the neglect of, life, of, 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 of the past years that allow Uber to do and to run the street without being uh, regulated, whoever was here, whoever, whatever it is, whoever allowed that to happen, has created five drivers to kill themselves. We gotta stop that. That was, a, that was an injustice done. People could, could have regulated Uber in, 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 26, in 2016, in the year before, they allow it. So whatever we, we confronting now, and as I was appointed to this committee, I got four years, unless they, the chairman want to take it away from me, but that's his, uh, his uh, prerogative, but we're gonna work and we're gonna do it, and we're gonna, we came here to work. And those, uh, those uh, uh, in Puerto Rico, in, we say culipandeos. You know what that means? Whoever, I don't know how you say that in English. But that, that's hard to end. That's hard to end. The, the, the delivery drivers have been killed. I've been killed, not killed physically, but killed with, the, with penalty, with abuses, with, 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 with uh, entrapment and all kind of things. The, 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 the yellow has been losing money. They have been from $1.5 million to $200,000 the medallion cost now. Five of them have killed, themselves, have killed themselves. How many more are we gonna allow them to kill themselves before we straight that? And then we got, we have a bill? Bill that some, anyway, you know, it's. Commission, I have another question for you. Coming in regarding uh, number 925, how many violations have been issued so far this year under the category of operating commuter van service without authorization? Chair Diaz, um so, as the commissioner stated to you before, the number of operations that we've employed, I can tell you that. Uh, hello, hello. Oh. Uh, your name, please. Oh, I'm sorry, Diana. I thought you knew me by now. No, no, you got a record, a record, for the record. Uh, Diana Panetti, Deputy Commissioner, Uniform Services Bureau. Okay, thank you. Okay. And you, you are in charge of the enforcement. Enforcement. I'm in charge of emissions, safety and emissions, and enforcement. Okay. Okay. Um, it's so far for for calendar year 2018. There have been about 46 summonses issued to the commuter van industry. Our emphasis is on illegal operation, which is why we've conducted so many operations for that and have so many seizures. In addition, since the beginning of this year, we've had 20 arrests uh, of these illegal operators. And uh, you know how many were issued in 2017? 2017, I was here also, and again, the emphasis was on illegal operation. There were two, 32 summonses that I have reported issued for, to the uh, to the industry. So, uh, and again, we had numerous. In 2017, we had 439 operations targeting illegal operation because that's our focus. So how, how many of those violations have been dismissed? Dismissed? Yeah. Uh, defer to prosecution. I, can, I think we can get those numbers. We're happy to there. follow up with a report on the oath um, resolution of all of those summonses. Commissioner, I don't have any more questions for you. I don't know if my colleague doesn't have questions. I would appreciate it. You, okay?
Thank you, Chair. Uh, good morning, Commissioner. Uh, excuse me. Oh, sure. Uh, I want to recognize uh, Council Member Constantinides. Thank you. So I, I know we came in a little late. I just wanted to real quick, if you could give some help. Our, our districts seem to be having a proliferation and an increase of the passenger vans of 20 and under. And we're getting a lot of calls from residents and folks in the residential neighborhoods of the vans being parked just about everywhere. What, what are the current guidelines now for a under 20 passenger van or where they can and cannot park? The parking is basically the same parking that that applies to any other vehicle. Um, the 20 and under are the ones that we can enforce against for illegal street hails. But the parking, and I know that this is not just a, a problem in your neighborhood, but I know we've spoken to Council Member Moya about having similar problems, is you're kind of stuck with the residential parking zoning that you have. Um, and we often try to work with the local police precinct to let them know that there's, you know, a community problem with these vans and vehicles staying for extended periods of time and taking the parking away from the residents. Um, and we try to do what we call sort of visibility where we, with a marked van um, and marked patrol cars, we go around those neighborhoods so that they know that we're in the neighborhood. Uh, we have very few tools to actually effectively get at this problem, but I certainly know it is a, a significant community concern. Has there been any conversation as to possible new techniques or enforcement either during the day? It, I mean, it's it, to the point where there's such a lack of, I mean, Queens itself is a lack of parking, but now because there's such a huge growth of these community vans for every purpose, um, it's very difficult to navigate the tight streets in our neighborhoods when they're parked on the corner and they're just parked overnight for long periods of time, uh, taking away spots from residential homeowners and the businesses, uh, it, it's starting to get out of control. I'm going to defer to Deputy Commissioner Panetti, who I know has done some work on this issue, especially in Queens. Good morning. Good morning. It's still morning, right? <laughs> it's still. Uh, as the Commissioner stated, it's very challenging when Technically, these vans are parked legally. So what we've done is joined up with, um, in some cases, the well, in, in Manhattan, the traffic enforcement agents, the outer boroughs, the precincts, and we're addressing quality of life issues. So we go out there, and if if they're standing or parked in a no standing, that's we, we'll we'll write a summons for that. If they're littering, we'll write a summons for that. Um, if they're a legitimate uh, entity. We can do an inspection, and they'll know if they keep parking there. They're going to keep getting inspected. Um, these are the these are the the means we have now to address. It's an annoyance and a quality of life issue. Um, well, that's what's happening. It's a right. quality of life complaint that's right. growing and growing in numbers. So, what would a homeowner be able to do at this point? Just call. Well, many homeowners call three one one, and that and basically well, most of our, if not all of our, van enforcement is complaint driven. So that's how we know what areas to, to target, especially for these types of complaints. Um, and then we go out there and, and we use whatever tools we have available to us, which is traditionally the parking, the littering, um, and, and sometimes the noise. Has there been any conversation of starting the banning of either at certain times or including them in the commercial category so that we, we start to have some enforcement of limitation of where they can be? I think that's, I have not participated in that, but I think possibly our external affairs or policy uh, d division may be doing that. I know I've been working also with the Queensboro president, um, especially around the Parsons and Archer, because there's a lot of vans laying up in the residential areas before they come on out to Jamaica Avenue and such. Um, but I think that I would be very happy to pursue that with them. Yeah, well, you have the Main Street and then where the seven train ends, mm -hmm. and then you have the Long Island Railroad, and yep. you have many of the community churches. So Flushing, Peter Koo and I are just inundated with the passenger vans, and we're just not getting any good answers back to the residents. So I think it's time that we may have to start thinking about some new legislation. We have been successful with DOT getting some signage up in those areas to prevent standing and parking where before there were no signs, so that has alleviated part of the problem. It, I don't think that goes far enough into the residential areas, though. So that's something I'd be happy to look at with DOT. 
more signage in, for that. Thank you, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chair. I'd be look to look forward to on possible on maybe some further restrictions on these passenger vans in residential areas. It's a problem. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, we also have uh, Council Member Williams. Uh, Council Member, I will appreciate and I thank you for taking time from your campaign to be here, taking care of people's business. Uh, thank you for the plug. And uh, thank you very much for uh, chairing this hearing and my bill in particular. Thank you, Commissioner et al., for being here. Uh, just generally speaking, obviously, uh, transportation is a, a, a very big issue in this city. Uh, I'm not on the record uh, for a lot of it, but I want to make sure I am now. Um, I have uh, been concerned about uh, transportation for a while in the yellow taxi industry in particular. I, I just want to say on the outset, uh, they have ignored the outer boroughs uh, for a very, very long time, and I think there would have been a lot more energy had that not happened. Uh, with that said, I always want to say that city government failed, and those six um, drivers that taken their life, uh, I believe it is because of the city council and the administration uh, that did not put regulations on another industry as they came in. And frankly, they should be suing us out of the wazoo for what they, we created. My hope is that uh, with both chairs, uh, eventually we'll get to some kind of regulation that is fair for everybody uh, who is on the road. Um, I do want to, I know the chair put forth a bill and I'm hoping to speak to you about it uh, soon. I, I had some, some concerns and want to try to figure out what, what you're going to get at. I have actually had, um, I've got a cabbie suspended for six months who refused to pick me up uh, to go where I want to go. So I just want to make sure if there's a way we can address whatever concerns there are with this bill uh, without having uh, some adverse effects. So I'm looking forward to that conversation. Um, I, I do want to uh, focus uh, my attention on 925, which is the bill that uh, I am sponsoring. Uh, within the transportation industry, as in most industry, uh, the little guy always gets the squeeze. Um, and with the commuter van industry, um, we usually come to them when there's an emergency in the city, and then we kind of leave them aside when that emergency is gone. I'm frustrated that uh, in the whole talks of the L train, uh, the community van industry is not in those conversations, even as there are others coming out of the, of the woodwork who have not provided transportation in this city uh, in those conversations. So my hope is that they will be picked up in those conversations. Uh, we're trying to figure out how we're providing service. I know there is car sharing apps that are being given uh, spaces on the street. Um, those car sharing apps are going to spend, um, expend much more uh, bad in, um, pollution into the air than the vans who have uh, more capacity. So I don't understand why they're not in the conversation. I do want to shout out Hector Ricketts and Lyra Morrison, who are the point people for Queens and Brooklyn uh, for the van industry. Thank you for being here. Uh, so uh, intro 925 gives TLC the ability to exercise enforcement uh, against commuter vans with over 20 seats. I've been uh, riding vans, I guess, since I was 13, 14, uh, trying to get to school, live in what was called a two-fair zone at that time in, in Starrett City. Uh, they are an integral part of uh, valuable service in transit deserts uh, and places that are not quite deserts but are transportation starved, like my, like my district, uh, and underserved you know, by what is available now with the MTA. In the past, I've been proud to work on legislation that helped to both regulate the industry and to weed out bad actors that prevent legitimate owners from providing a valuable service. I'm proud to work with the community of drivers as well as with council members who at times uh, have issues with the van, so I've always appreciated their support, uh, including council member uh, Danique Miller and before him, uh, council member Leroy Comrie. Currently, the administrative code only permits TOC enforcement on vans up to 20 seats. This allows bad actors to attempt to skirt TLC enforcement by adding additional seating to the vehicles. This legislation will allow enforcement on such vehicles with, while keeping the legal operational requirement at a maximum of 20 seats. The legislation is not only good for passengers' well-being, safety, and experience, but will help to support legitimate commuter van operators acting within the law and within good faith. Um, I had a question. Is there any, I know there's some concerns that we're trying to work out uh, with some of the industry. By the way, I've always um, encouraged um, union partnership uh, with some of these van drivers, and I still do, and I appreciate uh, their support uh, 
after some hesitation of the previous bills that we had, and I hope to uh, at some point get the support for this. Is there any reason to believe TLC would interpret intro 925 to allow commuter vans to operate lawfully with more than 20 seats? No. Our um, the ad code provisions that govern our jurisdiction limit us to licensing and regulating for hire vehicles, and they have a cap of 20 seats. What the bill does um, is gets at this, this one problem of enforcement, which is people are using the 20 seat limit as a way to get out from under our enforcement. There was a case recently that was dismissed by oath. Uh, a, a driver was caught picking up illegally on Flatbush Avenue, it, the passenger said, yeah, I paid $2. The summons was issued. We brought it before oath. The vehicle registration said 20 seats, but he testified that he had 24. Because it was a wheelchair accessible vehicle, he'd taken out the space for the wheelchair and put in four extra seats. And so he was able to completely avoid TLC penalty. Um, and so oath dismissed the case. That's the kind of operator we're getting at. I mean, they're literally putting in extra seats to avoid TLC enforcement. And those extra seats um, certainly are not inspected. We don't know the integrity of that. And that's a dangerous situation. Do, do you know what the purpose of the cap for the enforcement was? Or what the purpose of the law that prevents you from why it was made in the way it was made. Do you have any idea? Um, I, I don't know why uh, our jurisdiction in terms of licensing was limited to 20 and below. Uh, ironically, the licensing for buses begins at 15 and above, so there's some overlap. Uh, we can certainly do some digging in the legislative history and follow up with you. How do you intend to use intro 925 to step up enforcement against illegal vans? We'll do the enforcement um, as we normally do, but now we'll have the ability to seize the 20 plus buses that we see very, very regularly when we're out doing our illegal enforcement um, on some of the busiest corridors in the, street, in the city. And now, instead of seizing them and being pretty certain that the summonses would be dismissed or summonsing them and being pretty certain the summonses would be dismissed, we can summons them or seize them with the authority knowing that we will be able to permanently take that illegal bus off the streets. So right, just right now you literally can do nothing with vans over 20 seats? Just Absolutely. And I, I want to stress that operators who put in additional seats simply to avoid enforcement are not only avoiding our enforcement, but they're putting their passengers at jeopardy because we have no idea of the integrity or the safety of those additional seats that are put in after market. Uh, well, thank you. Um, we, when we passed the bills before, uh, we, we put a cap on the uh, amount of vans that can be there. That cap still has a lot of room, and so people who want to operate uh, safely with insurance and legal, we encourage them to do so, uh, not to do what they can to skirt existing laws. I'm always f for trying to make sure everyone is able to eat, um, but we have to make sure that the community is safe and protected. And uh, you know, any God forbid, one accident can harm a lot of people, and those the public would have no protections at all, as well as the van drivers, many of whom are here, who actually pay all of the money uh, to be inspected, to be regulated, uh, insurance, uh, and insured. It's obviously not fair to them. So I just want to say thank you, Commissioner, personally. Um, uh, you and the TLC have particularly been good on this issue, and my hope is we can get support of this committee uh, and the council as a whole uh, to help with the enforcement. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Chair. We have joined. We have joined. We have been joined by Councilmember Cabrera. Uh, I'm about to dismiss the commissioner, but I don't know if Cabrera has any question before I dismiss the commission. No question, commissioner. Thank you for being with us today. We appreciate you taking part in this uh, public hearing. Thank you very much. And now we're going to open for. The question the public.
Okay, we are going to call the public, and I'm going to call for at the time, two minutes, and they, you are allowed two minutes, two minutes each. So first one, I'm going to call Cassandra Perez. Is Cassandra Perez here? Cassandra? Peter M. Mazur. Peter Mazur. Zubin Suleimani. Zubin Suleimani. Um, Barabi. Barabi Desai. Barabi Desai. Oh, Barabi is here. Okay, we're going to start with, uh, we're going to start with Cassandra Perez. Good morning, Chairman and Committee. I'm reading, I'm representing David Beyer, the president of the Committee for Taxi Safety. It's an industry group comprised of licensed agents who manage and operate approximately 25% of the yellow taxi vehicles. We're submitting these comments in opposition to intro 958. Uh, CTS opposes the bill because we think there are some unintended negative outcomes if passed in its current form. Uh, those would be including heavier congestion in the Manhattan Central Business Zone and an increase in risk to passenger safety. See. Committee. Cassandra, who do you want? Okay, thank you. Sorry, start all over again. Okay, no problem. Okay, start all over. Let's start the clock again. Okay. Okay. I'm reading testimony representing David Beyer, who is the president of the Committee for Taxi Safety, an industry group comprised of licensed agents who manage and operate approximately 25% of the yellow taxi vehicles. We submit these comments in opposition to intro 958. CTS opposes the bill because we think there are some unintended negative consequences if passed in its current form including heavier congestion in the Manhattan Central Business Zone and increase in risk to passenger safety. Allowing licensees of the TLC to have little or no penalty for violating their licenses has been an inescapable problem, which has led to other players totally disregarding any rule and regulation promulgated for the protection of passengers and the ability of licensed drivers to earn a living wage. First, the bill in its current form will deny passengers of the assurance that the vehicle that they hail or call will take them to their intended destination once disclosed. In many instances, this leads not only to geographic discrimination, but also discrimination based on an individual's appearance. Second, when drivers act outside of the license in which they and their vehicle are issued by picking up street hail, the public safety is endangered because the vehicle does not carry the commercial insurance for doing street hail work unintentionally creating a defense for insurance carriers to deny coverage for any injuries that may result in the events of an accident. The proposed adjustments to the fines will lead to greater congestion because if fines are low enough as to be included in the cost of doing business, drivers will seek to spend most of their time in the central business zone, abandoning the outer boroughs. Additionally, players called straight plates will begin operating in the central business zone and at the airports. Third, under current state law, yellow taxis were given a guarantee that they would be able to operate within the Manhattan, oh, 
central business zone and, the, and at the airports without any additional competition for street hail work. The current proposed bill would likely reverse that guarantee and result in greater competition for street hail work from vehicles that are not licensed. Additionally, street hail work in the outer boroughs is the guaranteed domain of green taxis. These vehicles have been battling ever increasing competition from four hire vehicles not licensed to do street hails and straight plates to the point where the number of green taxis on the road has diminished from 10,000 deployed to about half that number today. If anything, the council should consider extending higher fines throughout the rest of the city for unlicensed street hail. Okay, work. thank you very much. Uh, next one, uh, Mr. Mesa. Mr. Mesa. Good morning, Chairman Diaz and members of the committee. My name is Peter Mazur and I'm general counsel to the Metropolitan Taxi Care Board of Trade, a trade association representing the owners of approximately 5,700 medallion taxi cabs. We also operate the MTBOT Drivers Resource Center, which provides free training and other services to taxi cab drivers, as well as free legal representation to the, before the Office of Administrative Trials and Hearings, the Traffic Violations Bureau, and New York City Criminal Court for taxi-related offenses. To date, we have represented drivers in more than 5,000 hearings and have saved them at least three quarters of a million dollars in legal fees. This morning, I'd like to offer some comments and observations with respect to Intro 958. This bill would sub substantially reduce fines for a number of offenses that are proscribed by the administrative code, including acceptance of street hail by licensed livery drivers as well as passenger service refusals and overcharge by licensed taxi cab drivers. As an advocate for the driver community, my initial reaction would be to support any bill that would lower fines to our clients. For many of these drivers, fines imposed at administrative hearings or as a result of it negotiated settlements with the TLC represent a significant financial hardship and are often disproportionate to the offense committed. Taxi and for hire drivers are regulated on multiple levels by the police department, criminal court, other agents such as park and sanitation officers, TLC inspectors, and even members of the public who can file consumer complaints. We have a complex system of laws, rules, and regulations in overlapping jurisdictions and inconsistent fines. For example, a driver, a driver blocking a lane of traffic could be issued a criminal court summons and pay a fine of $25 to $50, a parking ticket and pay $95, a traffic ticket and pay a minimum of $338, or a TLC oath summons and pay a minimum of $200. Depending on where the summons is adjudicated, the fines will vary drastically. Part of the problem stems from the fact that for some infractions, fines are set by the administrative code. For other offenses, they're set by, TLC, uh, by the TLC and fines or can I just briefly conclude? And the TLC has broad authority to set high fines and even seek license revocation for every single offense. Serious offenses may carry lower fines than less serious ones. If this legislation enacted into law, the penalty for a passenger refusal or overcharge will be $100, but a parking offense will be $200, and a minor traffic offense $300 which are higher than fines faced by other jurisdictions. It's well intended, this legislation, and may be a significant first step towards re reducing the regulatory burden, but it doesn't address the problem of inconsistent penalties, inconsistent fines. We need a top to bottom review of all of the agencies that enforce laws and rules against TLC licensed drivers and a complete review of the penalty structure for all offenses in all jurisdictions that regulate this industry with the objective of ensuring equity, fairness, and consistency. Penalties should be proportionate to the offense committed and not be based on where the summons is heard or which law enforcement agency issued the summons. The council has broad authority to set fines. It also has the authority to grant or withhold from the TLC authority to set fine specific rules. And we urge the council to undertake a comprehensive review of all fines and penalties set by the council and the TLC to determine if they are fair and reasonable and determine the legitimate public safety concerns of this city. Thank you. Mr. Mason, thank you very much for your support. I like, I like this, what you say here. We need a top to bottom review of all the agencies that enforce laws and rules against TLC licensed drivers, and a complete review of the penalty structure for all offenses in all jurisdictions with the objective of ensuring equity fairness and consistency. That's it. That's a heavy sentence. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. 
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You okay today? Um, yes, I'm doing well. We good? Always good. <laughs> <laughs> um, good morning, Chairman Diaz and Council Member Cabrera. My name is Beta Desai. I'm the Executive Director of the New York Taxi Workers Alliance. We have over 21,000 registered members, and we represent only the drivers in this industry and those who drive across this industry. Um, I'd like to speak specifically on Intro 958. We certainly welcome the opportunity to be able to review the fines. Um, I mean, I actually, I would just add to what Mr. Mazur just testified to and say that the fine review needs to be set in a way where the levels, you know, they should be commensurate with driver earnings. It can't, you know, we can't have a situation where for, you know, any violation, a driver walks out of that hearing and they could be, they could basically be out of two weeks, sometimes three weeks, up to four weeks um, out of, you know, income because the fine levels are just too high. Um, we also need to end the situation where you end up paying a monetary fine and could also face a suspension or a revocation. It just doesn't make any sense and you're basically keeping drivers in a debtor's prison because you're expecting them to pay a fine and meanwhile you've taken away their livelihood, which is the only thing that would allow them to be good on that fine. Um, but I do want to get to the specifics of the intro as, as, it, as it currently reads. We would not be in favor of changing the penalties, particularly around refusals and illegal street hail pickups. I mean, particularly, you know, around refusals. I mean, the reality is this is an issue that we have to make progress on, where we have to move forward and, no, and not go backwards. I mean, one of the reasons that we think that the fines need, in, in totality need to be reevaluated is so that there is more seriousness given to certain violations, particularly violations like race-based refusals. Also around illegal street hail pickups, I mean, there's real progress that's been made and I think that, you know, given the other bills that the council is considering, trying to, you know, more or less level the playing field, it's important that those go into effect before we take a look at the illegal pickup um, fines in particular. Thank you. I love when people support the working class and, and, and not the, the millionaires. So thank you for your testimony, and I think that Council Member Cabrera has a question for you. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much uh, for holding this important hearing. Uh, and, and regarding Intro 958, which I didn't think we were going to get so much uh, uh, <laughs> support or feedback or, or against. <laughs> right, right, absolutely. Uh, just, just uh, let me make a statement first, and then uh, uh, actually two statements. Uh, number one, uh, what we did in this bill is essentially took uh, the model that is being used in Chicago, and in Chicago so far, uh, they're not having any, any particular issues that I know of. Uh, if they are, please let me know. Uh, that has hurt. Uh, the end game, which is uh, to, at the end of the day, is to control people's behavior. It would be a positive one in terms of, of uh, the for hire. Uh, but look, I'm willing to look at that particular issue that you just mentioned, uh, the pickup, because I know that's an important issue. I know there's certain groups that are very concerned about it. I'm, I'm flexible, bendable. Uh, to make sure that we have something that makes sense uh, for everyone. I, one of the issues that has come up is that, uh, that, that, that was eloquently uh, mentioned, was that, you know, some people say, well, you know, it's between 100 and $400, but, you know, for hire people are not making what they used to make. So when they made the, those penalties, so 2,000, 10,000, 10, that's when they were making uh, a lot more money. And so uh, now, you know, I, when we got brief, uh, Democratic Caucus, we were told that the average for hire is making only 32,000. That's 
average. So we're talking about there are people who, who are way below that to get to that average, and so that are making more because they're putting in tons of tons of hours. So I, I do want it to be contextual, something that we could look at year for year, uh, something that we're not going to be you know out of sight, out of mind. And so uh, with that, I give it back uh, to the chairman. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now we have Mr. Subin Suleimani. Uh, good morning, Chair Diaz and committee members. Uh, my name is Zubin Suleimani. I'm a staff attorney with the New York Taxi Workers Alliance, uh, the 21,000 member strong union of drivers of yellow cabs, green cabs, and black cars. Uh, we appreciate Councilman Cabrera's and this committee's attention to the problem of excessive fine amounts imposed by the TLC and welcome legislation to reduce certain fine amounts. However, this current draft of uh, Intro 958 only reduces fine amounts for mandatory penalties governed by the Administrative Code for refusals, overcharges, and illegal pickups, um, which should uh, not be disturbed. The vast majority of financial penalties imposed on drivers, however, are currently determined by TLC regulation and are not defined by any provision of the Administrative Code. And it is those fines, not the current mandatory penalties for refusal that need to be reined in. So for example, Peter spoke about a $200 parking violation issued by the TLC that when issued by any officer of the NYPD would only be $65, right? So it's absurd that a driver making less than the average New Yorker has to pay a 300% premium on their parking violations. Uh, another example is the TLC will routinely ticket drivers with a $1,000 charge for what they call reckless driving but that is charged where there has just simply been a simple traffic violation or even some cases a non-moving parking violation they will charge as reckless driving. $1,000 and a 30-day suspension. Um, one member of ours was charged $350 and, and uh, faced a potential 30-day suspension for using a nebulizer in his cab to treat his severe asthma. If he didn't use it, he would not have been able to breathe. Um, the provision under which that fine is issued is called willful acts against the public interest. Um, now, that provision for drivers carries the same penalty, $350, 30-day suspension, as, as for when that charge is brought against an FHV base. So that is when a driver earning poverty wages is subject to the same financial penalty for the same conduct as a $70 billion multinational corporation. So I think that provides some context for how the TLC needs to revisit ensuring that these fines are actually commensurate with the workforce's earnings. So aside from those penalties um, that are currently in the ad code as mandatory penalties, broadly the TWA is proposing a framework for driver fines um, that would mirror that adopted by the city of Chicago, in which the maximum fine uh, for any violation would be $400. Additionally, because there's a practice of bundling tickets, we'd say that the maximum fine for any one in incident could be $1,000. And also that the TLC would have to stop its practice of fining drivers and also suspending their license, taking away the ability to pay those fines. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your participation and your uh, willing to take the time to come here and, and help us. Thank you very much. Council Member Miller is uh, join us today. So now we're going to call on Christine uh, Johnson, Hector B. Christine Johnson. Who is Christine? Christine Johnson, Hector B. Ricketts, and uh, Leroy Morrison. Okay. We're going to start with Christine Johnson.
Go ahead. Okay. Good afternoon, Chair Diaz and members of the committee. My name is Kristen Johnson, and I am testifying on behalf of the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund, LDF. Thank you for the opportunity to testify this morning. At a time when this country is becoming increasingly aware of the racial divide that persists in accessing public accommodations, it's imperative for New York City to make a commitment to equal and fair access for all and to not pit hardworking taxi drivers against black commuters with legislation like Intro 958. I strongly urge you to vote no on this bill. LDS work has long recognized that full citizenship for black Americans requires the elimination of discrimination in public spaces, schools, transportation, public accommodations, and the transformation of these spaces to protect the dignity of communities of color. The yellow taxi is one of the symbols most closely identified with New York City. But for many black New Yorkers, being unable to hail a taxi has become a symbol of the frustration and indignity of prejudice and marginalization within one's own city. In 2011, the city announced a crackdown on drivers who refused to service outer boroughs, a practice with a markedly disproportionate effect on people of color. But it is now 2018 and the problem persists. We are also keenly aware of the substantial burdens facing the industry. Taxi drivers are hurting. Competition has drastically increased and the value of taxi medallions has plummeted. In recent months, five taxi drivers facing financial pressures and debts have taken their own lives. At a time when we, sh we should, be excuse me, at a time when we should be uniting to combat racism and economic injustice, legislation like Intro 958 offers a counterproductive solution to a very real problem. Intro 958 will not provide sustainable incomes for taxi drivers. It will facilitate discrimination. It would lower penalties specifically for violation of refusing to take a passenger to their desired destination. As we learned at the hearing in April and from reading statements from the Taxi Workers Alliance, there are a number of issues making it difficult for taxi drivers to earn a decent living today. Fines for discriminating against customers is not among them. Discrimination is not only wrong, it is bad for business. Losing black customers does not help. I'll wrap up very quickly. Recent high profile incidents have cast a national spotlight of some of the indignities and dangers faced simply from existing in public while black. Some private companies have taken great strides to recover from embarrassing and harmful incidents of racial discrimination and to ensure they do not recur. Going forward, we should look to bold, innovative solutions that will finally put an end to racial discrimination in the taxi industry. For now, though, the decision is simple. Say no to a bill that will make it easier for people who operate a public accommodation to deny a basic surface in a way that would have a disproportionate effect on black people. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, did you know that the, those fines for up to $2,000 are not for refusing to pick up people. Those fines are for, re for picking up people. So when they, when they put a fine for up to $2,000, they're doing it for those livery drivers. And the majority of livery drivers are black and Hispanic. And those livery drivers goes and pick up on 96th Street or on the, on, on LaGuardia Airport or on Kennedy Airport, and they pick, no, they, it's not because they deny to pick up people, it's because they are picking up people, so they are up to $10,000. So, and the majority of those fines are for black and Hispanic uh, drivers. Uh, Mr. Leroy, Leroy Morrison. Mr. Richard Schultz. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. My name is Hector Ricketts. I'm the president of the Commuter Van Association of New York. I'm also the president and owner of Community Transportation Systems, which is an authorized commuter van service in Brooklyn and Queens, authorized to operate 53 licensed vans. I must commend uh, Council Member Miller and Williams for their collaboration on intro 925. For too long, illegal operators have circumvented the rules and are operating vehicles in excess of 20 passengers simply because the TLC does not have the jurisdiction to enforce. This bill will level the playing field, give the TLC no excuse 
uh, regarding the proliferation of illegal vans. And in a time when the entire liver industry is Im being impacted by technology networking companies, enforcement is needed. The TLC's hands are tied. And this bill will equip them with the tool to remove these dangerous vehicles from the streets, making our communities safe, and building a legitimate commuter van service that operates within the law. So I urge that you pass uh, this bill. On intro 897, I agree with the intent of the bill, which is to make sure that every licensed van is operated by a licensed driver. However, this bill discriminates. Commuter vans would be the only entity required to have matching drivers for matching vehicles. Uh, Lyft, Uber, the yellow cabs, Ford chariot are not required to have a roster of 100 drivers to 100 vehicles. Commuter vans would be, only, would be the only vehicles to do this. There are laws on the books already that the TLC and the NYPD can enforce to make sure that a van is operated by a licensed operator. Any preliminary enforcement could result in the issuing of a violation for having no 19A cert safety certification, no CDL license, no TLC hack license. So there are laws on the books. The problem is that this city has not employed a no tolerance uh, approach to enforcement when it comes to illegal vans. So there are laws on the books. This law is not practical and it would never be practical in its implementation. Thank On, you. so Thank I ask that you reject that bill. Thank you. Okay. Let me give you one, one, one more minute. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Maybe you regret that. <laughs> On 985, I believe that penalties should be significant enough to be a deterrent. So I ask that you not change this law, but you look at the disadvantage that the liver industry and the yellow cabs are suffering because of the influx of those millionaires with their Big money and their technology, Uber, so, Lyft, so what, and all of those things are so putting our liver it? industry at the disadvantage. So that's where the it? focus ought to be to level the playing field. Okay, thank you. So what should we punish the deliveries when the big more people are making the money? So what? what level what the playing field. What are you opposing? Let us compete fairly. What are you opposing? The there should be penalties for unlicensed operators. You're operating. confusing me. You're confusing me. There should be significant penalties for unlicensed operators, but the playing field should be leveled so we all participate. There's a huge market there. We should all participate fairly. Uh, that's what we're trying to do, but, right. but they're hitting only the, 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 the little guys. Anyway, Mr. Leroy? Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Um, first, morning. we want to say thanks to you, the chair. I want to say thanks to the committee. And I want to say thanks to Council Member Danique and Jamani to pass several package of bill for commuter vans across the boroughs. And what we're saying here, uh, my name is Leroy Morrison. I'm also the vice president of Commuter Van Association of New York, but I'm speaking on behalf of Alexis Van Lines. I'm also the CEO for Alexis Van Lines. We've been around for over 30 years. When the city's in crisis, they call us. After the crisis is over, they treat us like underdogs. So we don't want to feel like we're underdog. We want to come out of the shadow into the light now. And that's what we want to do now. So with Council Member um, Danique Miller here, been doing so many great legislation. Today is the only day I'm going to oppose um, the bill that he's doing, the 897, 
Otherwise, we have billionaires that come in here like Ford Chariot and all these big companies. And if it wasn't for Council Member Denique Miller to put the cap on it, it would end up just like Uber and Lyft and destroy our industry. And our community here is not everyone have money to take Uber and Lyft and VIA and all these big companies. So, Mr. Chair, there's a lot of stuff that we need you to look at also with New York City DOT. Let's not overlook them because there's certain places that commuter van run right now where they're putting in zip cars and they're putting in um, enterprise cars. We apply for license to expand our commuter van service and they're treating us like we're nobody. We're unfairly treated. So with the intro 897, I explained to Mr. Councilmember Denique Miller that we should try to do an amendment because there's no transportation in New York and New York City that have a 100 driver. You have to buy a 100 vehicle, then get a 100 drivers to go with them. Drivers come and go. Some of our drivers, they become MTA drivers, so we still have to go out there and look for drivers to put behind the wheel of these vehicles, so we kindly look at it. And the intro 925 we're supportive of that because that's what's going on now. A lot of Pennsylvania buses, these buses bigger than MTA buses, and everybody's buying these buses because it's a loophole to jump to the loophole, and our buses have to go to a fairly New York State DOT safety every six months and every month for maintenance. We're asking you to please, the 925 will be something that will help the community and build a community with the council member and make this thing happen. And we need to put more work into this, sir. Mr. Morrison, let me tell you that council member Miller yes, sir. is one of those council members that I am honored uh, to work with. He has shown that he really cares and, and look out for the, for the best of the community. So you, in Council Member Miller, we have one distinguished, dedicated uh, public servant that I'm really honored. Not with all of them, but with Council Member Miller, I'm really honored to work with. So we, uh, we, we will be working I, together. I have a lot of respect for him, and I will always have a lot of respect for Council Member Denique Miller, and I want you to work also with the minority community too, especially Southeast Queens and Brooklyn also, to build a better transportation system in New York City. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. There is no more witnesses. I thank all of you for allowing us to conduct this hearing, of, for supporting the hearing with your presence. And we will be, Council Member Miller, you want to say something before we go? Yes, if, 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 if I may, Mr. Okay. Chief. Thank you so much. So uh, in, in regards to legislation, this is so, um, it is a pleasure. To, to have uh, Councilmember Diaz chairing this committee because we're really touching on issues of transportation in our community that have not been done at this level. Um, transportation is a great equalizer, no matter what it is, but we want to make sure, and, and if you don't have it, our community suffer. We want to make sure that, that it is safe, it is affordable, it is accessible, and, and, and quite frankly, we, everybody, these are, the like-minded folks that are in this room here together uh, today. My legislation simply uh, attempts to ensure that we have licensed certified operators for the vehicles, not one for every vehicle per se, um, but if you look at the, the disparities in the number 460 whatever uh, registered vehicles operating and, and 200 and change, uh, uh, certified operators. We want to make sure that there are certified operators behind the wheels. And, and most of all, it does come down to enforcement and, and at so many different levels. You know what? We, we probably don't need any new legislation for anything. We need to enforce what's already on the books, and that's just not as it pertains to transportation, but we, we do a lot of that. We, we need more education and more enforcement than we need legislation in these terms. Um, you know, for many years we have sat on different sides of how we provide transportation in our community, but we've come together to kind of figure out what that means. Here's, I, I do have one concern about, um, uh, what is it, 897? And, and, and that is, uh, are we then, do we have the authority to license buses and if 
we do have the license and authority, whether it's the DOT or whomever, um, or is this the wave of the future that we are? Do you guys plan on operating buses? Yes, um, I can answer that question, Council Member. Mm -hmm. We have a state bill right now in the state now where they're planning to make sure, we're trying to actually build our business so we can be part partner with the MPR. My, 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 my question is, do you plan on operating 25 passenger yes, sir. larger buses? Yes, sir. We plan to go at least 24 passenger, 25 passenger in the near future, sir. Okay. Instead, just 20. That way we can eliminate five cars off the street for, you know, what the congestion, sir. All right. I, I think for the record, the MTA opposes that competition. Okay, so we leave it at 24 then, sir, because we're right. the MTA guys. But one day we're going to work with the MTA as partners. I'm of course. Because we're close. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, so I'd say my, and, and again, uh, Mr. Chair, thank you so much for your leadership, because otherwise we would not have this conversation that so gravely impacts our community. Um, thank you to Councilmember Miller, Councilmember Cabrera, Councilmember Rodriguez, Councilmember Borelli, Councilmember William, Councilmember Ballon, Councilmember Moya, Councilmember Constantides, that were here today uh, present in this meeting. And thank you to all of you for attending, ladies and gentlemen. This meeting is 